Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this another hurricane season countdown video. And so we are 24 days away from the official start of the hurricane season, which begins, of course, on the 1st of June. But don't be surprised if the season kickstarts this week. And why do I say that? Because there is the possibility that we could see development taking place in the Atlantic Basin. So we will be talking about that and we will also be talking about that eclipse that's going to be happening next sunday so if you're not aware there will be a total lunar eclipse on next sunday so i will be giving some details regarding that and we also have our first tropical wave of the season making its way from africa so we have quite a bit to talk about in this video and of course before i go into details Okay, and so first things first, we are taking a look at satellite imagery. And so we have that area of strong convection associate associated with the first tropical wave of the season and so you might be thinking does that mean we will have storms now actually no so tropical waves aren't guaranteed to develop into tropical cyclones and it's actually a small percentage of all the tropical waves that occur during the season that actually develop into tropical cyclones so this one here is certainly not expected to become anything so you might be thinking before that this might be alex we're talking about but no actually we have a low pressure system that is located off the US and so that is what could loiter around and become Alex. So let's take a look at what two of our models are showing for the latter part of this week. And so first we have GFS. And so this is by Thursday on the 12th of May. And so we are seeing that 1009 millibar low pressure system there. And uh, the lower we have the pressure, the stronger the system. And this thing here is definitely not intense, but it does gain a little bit of strength and as we head to friday on may 13th friday the 13th we're seeing that gfs is showing that this thing here is going to be making its way into florida but not as a strong system and euro is sort of agreeing on that so euro is not showing that we will have anything very strong or major developing from that area of low pressure but once conditions are conducive we're talking about limited dry air we're talking about conducive wind shear uh we could see some development and we already have the gulf stream there so the gulf stream is just that strong ocean current that brings warm water all the way from the gulf of mexico out into the atlantic so that could fuel this system here because remember that whether it be a tropical or subtropical cyclone we need some warm ocean temperatures around for us to have some intensification taking place and we have that there so we have to wait and see what is exactly going to be happening with the system but on this tropical cyclone formation potential map we are seeing that area that is highlighted out in the atlantic and that is where our low pressure system will be lingering so there is that chance for us to see alex so let me know in the comments if you think that this low pressure system will certainly develop into the first cyclone of the season and tropical cyclones developing in the month of may is not uncommon because we've been seeing that a lot over the past few years Nevertheless, we are now going on into general conditions across the Atlantic Basin. And so, I really want to talk about the sea surface temperature map. So, first things first, let us go ahead and look at that. And we are focusing on the Gulf of Mexico. And so, this was a map from last Sunday. So, the last time I made a countdown video, this was what it looked like in the Gulf of Mexico. So, it was just a week ago. And look at this now so we have a major change uh, based on the presentation of this map here so we are seeing that things are warming up quite nicely in the gulf of mexico so very very soon we will see that most of the area probably within the next week or two we will see that most of the area has a favorable sea surface temperatures to support tropical cyclone development and other areas such as over in the eastern pacific and sections of the caribbean are already pretty warm so all that needs to happen right now is for the main development region to get in shape. But as we head towards next month, which is when we're going to have summer beginning, we will see uh, that gradual increase in that temperature and so as for what is expected in the caribbean this week so first we're taking a look at the euro map right here and this is the total accumulated precipitation that is expected between now and the next sunday on the 15th of may and so we're seeing that areas of 
the Central Caribbean and also going up into the Bahamas are expected to receive the most rainfall, uh, probably rainfall that amounts to just over two inches in total thereabout. But for the rest of the region, we're not seeing that a whole lot is expected. And then as for GFS, GFS is somewhat agreeing on this that we will have areas of the South and Central Caribbean going up into the Bahamas that are going to be receiving the most rainfall. But right where we're having those colors, such as that burgundy shade right there, is where we could see the most rainfall totals, but that is offshore. So nor is expected to have that much rainfall between now and Sunday in the Caribbean region. And as I speak about next Sunday, let us now go ahead and talk about that eclipse. So if you're in any of these regions that are highlighted, you will be witnessing a total lunar eclipse or at least a partial lunar eclipse and so next sunday i will be going more into details about this but if you're in the western hemisphere uh, especially those areas that are highlighted in that pale red shade so i'm talking about uh, sections of the western u.s uh, central and south america all of the caribbean and portions of the antarctic all those areas will be seeing the full eclipse from start to finish and other highlighted areas will also witness an eclipse maybe a total eclipse but not the eclipse in its entirety so as i said next sunday i will be going more into details but mark the date if you are excited about seeing that eclipse i certainly am because i love seeing lunar eclipses so the last eclipse that i witnessed was last year uh, on the 19th of november i remember that day clearly it was a partial eclipse that was very close to being a total lunar eclipse however the last total lunar eclipse that i witnessed was on the 21st of january back in 2019 so this is going to be my first total lunar eclipse since then and if you're another person that usually catches these eclipses or you're not sure when they're happening well here is your chance to see yet another eclipse and so as we're going to be heading throughout the rest of this week i might make new videos especially if we have a better chance of seeing the formation of alex so I will be making videos if there is the need for me to do so or if the National Hurricane Center uh, issues any outlooks regarding it and we see that it is likely that we will definitely have some development. But regardless, I think that is going to be bringing some inclement weather to portions of the southeastern U.S. So if you're in any of those states, you really want to be cautious of that. Again, states such as Florida, Georgia, and probably portions of South Carolina as well and so guys that is really it for this update video and so if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be with wise